cold plunging, cold water immersion, cold immersion therapy, whatever you call it, it's the latest trend in health and wellness. Is it something you should be doing? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Cold plunging is almost exactly what it sounds like, immersing your body one way or another in super cold water. Some people do this by hopping in a tub full of ice water. Some people take very cold showers, or some people dive into freezing cold lakes. While a lot of people try to talk about this in very serious ways, calling it cryotherapy and extolling its health benefits in every outlet they can find, we were feeling pretty skeptical about it. So we did what we always do, to the research. And once we got to the research, we were pretty disappointed. A huge chunk of the literature on cold plunging uses animal models, mainly rodents. While I've got nothing against rodents, for the most part anyway, I'm not that interested in basing my health choices off of what works for them. We've addressed this before on the show, but it's worth repeating. Rodents are not humans. We can point to many things that appear beneficial in rodents or things like drugs that have worked in an animal model, but fail in humans. Animal models are critical to science, and we need the information we get from them, but we cannot jump directly from animal data to human outcomes. I also have to point out that water immersion is likely a very different experience for animals, i.e. extremely stressful, than it is for humans. That can matter a lot when measuring some outcomes. And for anyone who still loves the results of the cold immersion rodent studies, keep in mind that a bunch of them show no effect too. There were some human studies, but it's hard to get much out of them because they're very small. They examine all kinds of different outcomes, particularly for athlete performance, and there are lots of mixed results. Some studies report an effect, some studies report no effect, and some studies even report detrimental effects. And most of them look at health measures either during or right after cold immersion. We probably expect there to be some immediate biological reaction to sudden and extreme cold, Taking those measurements doesn't answer any questions about sustainable, long-term health or therapy outcomes. And we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the cold immersion study that recently went viral. This one was looking at life satisfaction and physical composition of Czech army soldiers after cold water exposure. It reported positive results, but a closer look at the study reveals such a hot mess that we're not even sure where to start. So we'll just do a quick summary of the issues that we and others have noticed, including some particularly eyebrow-raising issues discovered in a deeper dive of the data by Nick Brown, one of our favorite self-appointed data police cadets. One, the study never compares the cold immersion group with the control group. The only comparison they do is of before and after outcomes within each of these groups. Without a comparison to the control group, it's simply not possible to make a statement about how effective the treatment is. Two. They don't include appropriate controls in their statistics. Three, there are two groups included in the data analysis, mindfulness and sleep, that are not mentioned anywhere in the article. Four, data from a handful of participants in different groups were excluded without explanation, other participant data appear to be duplicated, and some participants were assigned to more than one group. Five, and finally, it appears that at least two and possibly five of the participants are also authors of the paper. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. In the end, things aren't looking great for cold plunging from a scientific point of view. As always, I'm not here to yuck your yum. If you get personal enjoyment out of this trend, by all means, keep it up. But if you're doing it for health benefits while secretly hating it, rest assured that you can drop it without any health guilt. The existing data just aren't compelling. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on Does Cold Weather Cause Colds? We'd appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel down below and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillahome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.